all year long, we're celebrating uh, something that's incredibly miraculous. We're celebrating the fact that um, God chose to be with us. Um, God in his perfection feels so far away from a broken world and from broken people that aren't perfect. And yet he decided, out of his love and out of his goodness, um, to become one of us, to come live with us, to lay down his life to bridge a gap for us, to be with him. And now um, we get to be in relationship with him every day. Uh, I remember talking to this guy in Arizona, and um, and we were talking about God ideas, uh, kind of different people's ideas about God. And I said, well, well I'm, I know God. Um, I talk to him every day. And he goes, you're crazy. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, man. Uh, and this is a truly incredible thing, and I think sometimes we get so used to it. But that's what we're celebrating at Christmas, is um, God becoming one of us and drawing near. So, um, today we, we start this this season, and, um, and I want to read for you kind of uh, a passage from Isaiah 40. And this is a season really of preparation. We do this every year, preparing our hearts again. To, to celebrate um, God being so close. And I want to read Isaiah 40 for you. It's actually the passage of scripture that John the Baptist used as he said, get ready for Jesus to come. Um, All right. Isaiah 40, 1 through 5 says this. Comfort, comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed. Her sins have been paid for. And she has received from the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up and every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, and the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all mankind together will see it, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Um, my nephews went over to the Apple Cup. They left Thanksgiving dinner a little bit early so they could drive uh, through a storm to get to Apple Cup, and uh, we were concerned about them. They were going across a mountain pass. Um, but... That mountain pass is rather incredible if you think about it. You have giant mountains there, and uh, out of the brilliance of technology, they can take the sheer side of a mountain and make it a roadway. They lift up um, some gaps, they bring low some other sections, and suddenly there a path exists um, for, for folks to move from one place to another. And that's, that's what we're going to do. Um, John the Baptist said, here's how it's done. Prepare a path, prepare a way for God to come into your life. Um, and we're going to do that at Harvard this year. We're going to do it very holistically. Um, John and I were, were looking through this and looking through the Christmas story and, and kind of planning, and we had never seen this before, and we were both excited about it. But um, through some Christmas stories, we're going to look at what it means to prepare our will uh, to be ready for Jesus, what it means to prepare our mind and our emotions. And... Um, Finally, our strength, so that we're ready uh, for the Lord to come into our lives. Um, this week, we are decorating our house, and um, getting ready for anything is actually pretty similar. And uh, the first step in us decorating our house and putting up our Christmas tree was a decision. We should put up our Christmas tree this weekend, Thanksgiving weekend. And I didn't want to wait. One year, we waited till like the week before Christmas. It's a lot of work for only a week worth of enjoyment. So we had to do it this weekend, so we made a decision, and that's kind of where the will comes in. Um, and then Christina and I had to get on the same page about our expectations, and that's where our mind comes in. Uh, do we even know what we're getting into? How many hours is this going to take? And we kind of debated about how long this is of an adventure this would be. Um, and I remember one particular Christmas, um, we were just wrapped up in a bunch of other stuff, and our emotions never got there. You ever have holidays like that? Where it just like the season comes and goes, the next thing you know, you're like running around a mall trying to find something at the last minute, and you're like, I'm glad Christmas is over. And it, it, it just felt like a rainy season more than it felt like Christmas. Um, 
And so we're going to talk about getting our emotions ready. And then um, lastly, we had to take action. If we had sat around and said, let's get the house ready for Christmas, and then just went and watched TV, uh, something would have been missed. And so that's kind of the process we're going to go in terms of getting ready for Jesus. And um, so I want to start with the decision. Uh, I think God has already made his decision to love us. And now we make a decision to love him back. And so it, what better place to start than that? And I want to read for you um, a really incredible decision for the Lord. And it's from Luke chapter 1. And it's the decision um, that Mary made in response to Jesus, uh, to, to an angel coming and saying, you're going to bring forth Jesus. And so let me read this passage for us. It's uh, Luke 1, 26 through 38. It says, in the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. And then the angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. You found favor with God. You will be with child. You're going to give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel. I'm a virgin. And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she, was bar she who was barren is now in her sixth month. Nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. And then the angel left her. Let's pray. God. Thank you that you draw near to us. Thank you that you come to us just as you came to Mary and um, want to be close to us, want to be in us. And so um, meet us here now. Speak to us. Uh, prepare us for you. We love you. Um, yeah. There's an odd thing about this story that caught my attention this year. Um, I, I don't know if I've noticed it before, but um, what what caught me this year was that Mary's response was that she was troubled um, when the angel came and announced to her. Said, and, and, and I was reading it, and I've heard lots of sermons about why she was troubled. I mean, 16 years old, about to be pregnant, already engaged, what's the guy going to think of this? Um, all those things, but... Um, the angel hasn't said that yet. The only thing the angel has said to her is, Greetings, you're favored. God is with you. Why is that troubling? Why would that be troubling? That, that seems like pretty darn good news. Um, and so I, I began to dig into it a little further, and um, I looked up the word that's translated troubled, and I was, I was surprised to find that the word is, is less about being like, oh no, this is bad news. And more about, this is weird. It was surprised. <laughs> she was perplexed. This didn't make sense to her. Um, and I don't think that it makes sense to us, and that's one of the reasons why we have a hard time um, letting God impact our life. It's because we sometimes don't necessarily recognize how close God is, um, or that God would be with us. She was a humble, unimportant 16-year-old girl living in a small town. Um, her life was sort of going up uh, according to plan. Uh, this guy down the street, who she really liked, had managed to get together enough money, and now they were going to get married. They were going to live in this small town together. He was a craftsman, and I'm sure she's writing on little envelopes. Mary, wife, just... And, um, <laughs> and they're going to have this nice, humble life together. And suddenly, God shows up and says, Greetings, highly favored one. You're important, and I'm with you, and some really, really amazing things are about to happen to you. Um, 
there is a challenge in knowing that God cares for us. Um, and it's that God is actually involved in our lives. I often like to pray for people. And, um, and I was getting to know this one particular barista. And, uh, and I said, how are you doing today? And, and you could tell she was having a frustrating day. And she said, man, it has been rough. My, my car broke down. I had to walk to work. And now it's at the shop. And now I'm all worried that it's going to cost a ton to fix my car. I said, I'll pray for that. I'll pray for either that you get the money together or that the mechanic comes back to you and says it's it's no big deal. Maybe just a little something, something that can easily be fixed. And her response caught me off guard because she said, eh, you know, I, I'm betting God has more important things to worry about right now. Um, but it got at something, and it's the fact that do we really think that God cares about our lives. Are we small and insignificant that we would be surprised um, that we would be called highly favored, or that God would want to be with us? Um, I ran into this challenge in a really um, profound way when uh, probably the, the, the biggest event of my childhood happened. It was... I was eight years old, and I, I can remember the day crystal clear when my family called us in to sit down uh, in the living room, and um, my parents were getting a divorce. And I remember the day so clearly because I put my feet up on the couch, and my mom didn't get mad at me. And I'm like, oh no, something is terribly wrong here, because she would have told me to get my feet off the couch. Um, and, and me and my brothers all responded a little differently to this. My oldest brother figured he needed to be the man of the house. And so at 12 years old, he got super responsible. And he started acting like Ward Cleaver from Lee. <laughs> um, my middle brother is hilarious. And he brings light moments. And that's exactly what he did in our family. Is he created laughter and moments of lightness for us. And today he's a nurse. And he hangs out with people in hospitals, and I see him doing it regularly, where he brings lightness into people's hard moments in the hospital. It's a beautiful, beautiful gift that he has. Me, uh, I decided to be completely independent. I figured if my parents weren't going to take care of me the way I thought they should, I'm just going to do my own thing. Um, that worked out well. No. <laughs> um, I went my own way. And in the process of going my own way, um, I made a number of choices that made an absolute mess out of my life. And then at some point, I got to a place where I said, you know what, I can't live this way anymore. And I called up a friend of mine who happened to be a Christian, and I said, you have something that I don't. I need to explore it. And um, what I came to realize is that there was a God who loved me. And at some point, I decided, I need this God in my life and I want him to lead me. And I, I don't want to do life my way anymore. Not my will, his be done. No. And I made him the Lord of my life. Now in the process of that decision, I gave up my independence. I couldn't keep doing my own thing or else it would lead to the same places. Um, whenever we accept a parent or a mentor or even a friend's influence, um, we give up some level of our independence. As I was writing the sermon, I got on a roll. I was sitting there on the couch, and I was typing away, and I was cruising through this thing. And um, my wife goes, that is the worst ergonomic posture on the planet that you have right now. Um, I know you've been having some pain in your wrists, and I'm pretty sure it's because that is not how you should be typing. Uh, it would be really, really great if you would move to the table where you can actually sit properly. My first reaction, my independent side said, I've got this. I'm on a roll. Back off. <laughs> and then I thought about it and I thought, hmm, she loves me. She's right. <laughs> Maybe I should listen to her. And in the process, I had to give away some of my independence. I couldn't keep doing things my way. Um, Mary makes a decision to say, your will be done. May it be to me as you have said, is what she responds. Uh, 
to this angel's announcement, and it was a, a great giving up of independence. Um, what was being uh, told to her, though, was, was rather earth-shattering. You're going to be pregnant. And like I said, she was engaged um, to a young man. What's he going to think of this? Is, she, is he going to buy the fact that while well, she was just sitting there, and then an angel appeared, and she didn't actually go sleep with someone else, and she was a virgin, but um, she's about to have a baby. And this baby's going to be a king, so much for the simple life. Um, that's going to make the current king pretty mad. He's going to come after them. Um, their little life in Nazareth is going to get flipped upside down. Um, this announcement put all of that stuff at risk. And so it involved giving God her future, her body, her resources, her plan for her life, um, all to see what God could bring forth. And I think that's the exact same thing that we do when we decide to become a Christian, when we decide to follow the Lord one more day, is we say, God, I want what you have for me instead of what I can build on my own. Um, we have our plans. We have things we hold tight to. And God may want to adjust some of those things. He might want to make some low places a little higher in our life. He might want to take some high places that we've built up and say, we need to reduce that. Um, <clears throat> it involves actually a very similar passage where Jesus was in the garden. And it was as he was considering the fact that he would go to the cross to save us. And he goes into the garden and he prays. And his prayer, even though he doesn't want to go to the cross, was this. Not my will, but yours be done. We actually prayed it when they prayed the Lord's Prayer as well. On earth as it is in heaven, your will be done. Not our way of doing things. Are we willing to let God adjust us? If I'm honest, that's hard built up a lot of stuff. I, I like my life, and I like the way I build my life. And, and when God brings stuff into your life, sometimes it's curveball. It may not be what you wanted. Um, but I think there's some things that Mary absolutely knew that make it a whole lot easier to trust God. And um, I'm going to read another famous Christmas passage. It's, it's in that same um, part. It's right after the announcement. She goes and visits her friend Elizabeth, and um, Elizabeth says to her, Who am I that, that the mother of the Lord would come visit me? And um, Mary responds with a song. Um, it's called Mary's Song. And actually, John and I were talking about this, and John pointed out to me that this song um, has been banned numerous times. It's... Um, because it's revolutionary. But here's what Mary says about God. My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. He's been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. The Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He's performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost hearts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He's filled the hungry with good things, but sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. There's three things in here that I want to point out. One is... She recognizes that he cares. Um, God is mindful of us. He wants to bless us. Um, when we say yes to God, when we say, God, you can adjust my life, we are actually saying yes to one who wants the best things for us. Right? And that makes it a little easier. I remember one particular tough time in ministry. Christina and I had gone on a road trip and um, gone to visit uh, this couple who were both pastors, and um, her name is Rayanne. She's fantastic. And I remember as we were about to leave, Rayanne pulled me aside and goes, Chris, you do know that God is for you, right? He's not just trying to use you or mess with you. 
He actually loves you and he wants good things for you. I said, yeah, I already know that. I'm a pastor. <laughs> but I don't know if I knew it. Um, trusting God is a whole lot easier when we realize that God is for us, right? Um, the second thing that she realized is that uh, God does mighty things for the needy, the humble. When we realize that we need God, when we realize our own uh, deficiencies and our own brokenness in the areas where we could use God's help, God wants to lift those up. That's good news. Because if we go at this stuff on our own, if we just go at it with self-improvement, we're not going to get there. But instead, God comes alongside and in the places of your heart where life has not worked out like you wanted or where you feel deficient or where you find your failures, that is right where God can step in and go, I have something for you. God wants to lift us up. And the third thing that she recognizes is that he's merciful. Sometimes when we think of God, we think that he's up there watching and checking up on us. Are we being good enough? Are we doing the right things? And instead, God isn't looking to judge your life. He's looking to extend mercy and grace to you. He's looking to say, I forgive you, so let's, let's be in a relationship and now watch what I can do. It's easy to say yes to someone that you know is for you and who's somebody who's capable. Christina and I took a trip. Um, it was a big trip. It was like a three-week-long trip. Um, we got to go... <clears throat> to Italy. It's very cool. Mm -hmm. um, and Christina is a thorough planner, in case you haven't figured this out by knowing her. She's a thorough planner. And, um, and we had talked a little bit about the itinerary, but I realized it wasn't that hard for me to trust her scheduling our days in Italy, because I knew that she would find a really, really good thing. And she, she kind of asked me, well, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I want to go to all the churches. I didn't know how many churches there are there. All there. <laughs> and I want to go to museums. And she said, okay, we'll make sure that we have churches and museums almost every day. Um, but the rest she planned. And it wasn't hard for me to trust her because she's capable. And I knew that she would do good things, um, even though I didn't have control. Since the election, there has been all kinds of stuff going on. Protests. Um, and, and a whole movement of people saying, not my president, which um, the reality is after uh, the inauguration, he will be your president, uh, whether you're excited about that or not. But um, it struck me, this is the exact same decision we make with God. Uh, God is the king of the universe. He rules over it. And he rules over us. Um, and we have a king who loves us and will do good things in us. And we have a choice. We can either say, I'm going to keep doing my thing. You're not mine. You're not my Lord. And we can fight him and we can shake our fists at him and we can go about life our own way. Or we can be like Mary and say, may it be to me as you have said, I trust you. I know that you have good things for me. And so I put my life into your hands. Oh. That is the question of the will that we make. And that is the very first step in us being prepared for Christmas is do we want to put our life in God's hands? Do we want to have God's will be our will? Are we willing to step aside the things that we want for the things he wants for us? Um, I wanted to make that a little bit practical today, so I um, printed up some cards, and um, in a minute I'm going to have you consider them, but uh, here, Christine, if you could pass this out. Um, there's a couple steps, I think, in preparing our will. Um, the first is to pray for exactly what happened with Mary, because it's a gift to us as well, and that is that the Holy Spirit would overshadow us, would, would be a part of our life and would um, begin to make some adjustments to us. So you pray for the Holy Spirit to guide you. And then um, consider an area where you might want a little less of your will and a little bit more of God's will. I think we, 
We all have them. It might be at work, it might be in a relationship, it might be in how we use our time, it might be in how we use our resources. But where would you most like to see God work this Christmas time, this season? Um, and then the last thing is, is what is a step that you might be able to take, little one, to put behind that desire to see God work, to move towards having a little bit more of God in that place in your life? What is one small thing that you could do that's, that's practical and tangible? And I'm going to invite um, Dave to come up. I'm going to invite him to just play a little bit before we sing our next song um, so that we can uh, maybe do this process a little bit right now. Maybe it'll come quick, and the Holy Spirit will give it to you right away. Um, and if not, I encourage you sometime later today or this week to, to do that and to find something tangible that you can do that says, God, let your will happen, not mine. A little more you, a little less of you. All right, let's pray. God, thanks for your great love. Thank you that you care enough to draw close. Um, that you care enough to be with us and to lay down your life so that we can be with you. Thanks for wanting to be in a relationship with us. I pray that we would be aware that your Holy Spirit would work in us to where we need a little bit less of us and a little bit more of you. Help us to put our lives in your hands because you are good. We love you. Amen.